morning. This is Myra Elaine on the Buying Space channel. Today I continue to read the book of Psalm. The book of Psalm is not called Psalms. Just like Revelations, oh, it's not Revelations, it's Revelation. The last book in the Bible is Revelation. Not Revelations. Now, Revelation has Revelations in it, and the book of Psalm has Psalms in it. And these Psalms are songs. And they were actually songs. They were played on the harp, and they were sung. They're probably played on uh, other string instruments, too. Recently, and I've talked about accents, Marks, um, in my Torah readings. Uh, it's been a while since I've mentioned them. But anyway, little accent marks on the Hebrew. They always thought it was for the vowel sounds. And it may be for the vowel sounds. And uh, no one really knew how the language was spoken because the accent marks were lost here and there. Well, they've been rediscovered. And it's also been discovered that those little accent marks are music notes. David was a musical genius. And when he had his tabernacle, and when his son Solomon built the Solomon's temple, they had harps playing there. And they were playing the psalms, and the people were singing these psalms. So I've just finished chapter 119 which is 176 verses long. It was divided into um, 22 sections, uh, each section labeled um, a letter from the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, we are in book five of the book of Psalm. The book of Psalm is divided into five sections, and we're in the last, but each section, each book has different sections. So Psalm 119 is kind of a section of its own. Um, chapters 120 to 134 are called the Ascend Psalms. And when people ascended to Jerusalem for the three festivals they were required to go to a year, they would sing these psalms. 120 to 134. Now they might have sung the other psalms too. But these psalms were particularly um, appropriate for going to the festivals. Now, what were the festivals? At Mount Sinai, when Moses was given the Ten Commandments, he was also given a ton of other laws. <laughs> and then those laws are extrapolated in other rules and laws, and it went on and on and on. Uh, who knows, even present day people might be arguing about whether people could put in their false teeth on the Sabbath or whatever. But at that time, God instructed that the people should come together on three festivals a year, that they should journey to be together. And the first one is Passover, or the Festival of Unleavened Bread. The second one is Pentecost, is what most Christians know it as. But it's the, not the Pentecost where the Holy Spirit came, the Pentecost. In the Old Testament, it was the Festival of Weeks, and it was 49 or 50 days, depending on what liturgy you follow, after Passover. And I think the Jews call it Shikot. Wait a minute. No, Shavolt. It's Shavolt. Pentecost is Shavolt. And then the third festival, and most Christian people do not know about this third festival unless they're Messianic Christians, is um, the Festival of Tabernacles or the Festival of Tents. And that is called Shikot. And what it is, is the 
the entire time the Hebrews were in the desert, they lived in shacks and tents, and they didn't have houses. So every year, to remember and be grateful uh, through the journey for, for the desert and the people made it to the promised land, uh, they would live in a hut or a tent for a week. They even just even do this like in New York City, like, you, you know, there'll be a tent on a high rise or something uh, for people to celebrate um, the festival of tabernacles. But Jesus lived in Galilee. So him and his family and his cousins, you know, John the Baptist, a little kid running around. OK, and Jesus, a little kid running around and his uh, stepbrothers and sisters are all running around and their cousins all are going to these festivals every year and they're traveling on the road and what I love is what I'm about to read might be sung have been sung probably was sung by Jesus Christ himself on his way to these festivals every year because it would have been a big family thing and everybody would have gone unless they were you know um sick, lame, or lazy. <laughs> so anyway, this is Psalm 120. It's an ancient song that Jesus Christ himself may have sung, and I just love this. Oh, and another thing I wanted to say before I say this. King David was a musician. His son Solomon had harps in the tabernacle David's tabernacle and Solomon's temple and after they discovered that the little accent marks were also musical notes people started playing these songs on the harps and actually there's a harp school in Jerusalem now and the harps are coming back to Jerusalem and it's one of those things that you know people are ready to have a tabernacle they're ready to have a temple they're ready to sing you know these harps are in the streets of Jerusalem now being played and the uh, old Orthodox Greeks or not Greeks but uh, um, Jews and you know, everybody there is just loving seeing these harps out because it's uh, part of their heritage and it's being fulfilled that they are singing with these harps. And the same music that was out of the Old uh, Testament scripture, out of the Torah, out of the Pentateuch. So it's very exciting that all of this is coming back and this is happening in Jerusalem. And people are taking these harp lessons all over the world. And it's just amazing. But anyway, two Psalm. Chapter 20, a song of ascents. I call on the Lord in my distress, and he answers me. Save me, Lord, from lying lips and from deceitful tongues. What will he do to you? And what more besides? You deceitful tongue. He will punish you with a warrior's sharp arrows, with burning coals of the broom brush. Woe to me that I dwell in Meshach, that I live among the tents of the Kadar. Too long have I lived among those who hate peace, for I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. How many times have you felt this way? Every little thing you say, you want to bring peace, but they turn it around and they twist it and they make it war, and people will not leave you alone. They are just constantly being the devil to you. 
They are constantly trying to make everything you say and do evil when you are trying to do good. How many of us know this feeling? This psalmist was in a place where they were a fish out of water. And you know how I feel right now? That the entire world treats everybody else like they're fish out of water. And I love this psalm. It's like, how much longer, Lord? Please protect me from the lying tongues, the deceitful tongues. I've tried to do good. Like recently, I sent an email and I told somebody, I said, this isn't fair. This situation is not fair. And instead of keeping that email between the two of us, they went out and told the whole world I was trying to run their channel. I wasn't trying to run their channel. I was just giving them my opinion about how this situation made me feel. I discussed that situation with one other person, and that was the person selling the item. And that was it. I didn't say anything to anybody. But the next thing I knew, of course, they didn't mention my name, but they went on a live and said, wah, 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 wah. Uh, really just a lot of, uh, oh, my feelings are hurt. I'm destroyed. You know, just on and on. Making a huge mountain out of a molehill. And all I did was send them an email. And I did not discuss it with anyone else. But hey... Um, I don't know. People don't know how to have a conversation about a subject anymore. People are so prideful and reactive to everything. Even a suggestion puts them in, oh my goodness, I'm in drama mode. I've been attacked. And the person is just making... A suggestion but I guess if it's worth how do I say this YouTube has made people think about how they can create conflict out of nothing to get views to bring people in so they're constantly churning a deceitful tongue against everyone to bring people in oh this is an issue somebody's said something when it was just constructive criticism or a suggestion in an email that was private that was not stated to anyone else i feel like i am this psalmist and i'm surrounded by people that are just going to use whatever i say for fodder and I pray. I pray to God. I pray to God to help that woman. I pray to God to help uh, the people around that person to realize that she is the way she is. God love her. I love her. I really like her as a person. But yet she attacked me for making a suggestion. <laughs> you know, I've been around for a while. My opinion is valuable. Whether people want to take my opinion or not is up to them, but that doesn't change the fact that not just me, everyone that has an opinion about a situation, their opinion should be treated as valuable, not something to twist around to increase your views and increase your audience. Uh, that's how things are uh, in a lot of the online communities. And, um, you know, I just have to sit back and go, oh my goodness, God help us that, you know, a suggestion could be turned into an attack. Because it wasn't. It wasn't an attack. It was like, you know, this is a little unfair. Can we do something about this? Can we talk about this or think about this? You know? Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater, as they used to say when I was a child. If there is an 
if the bath water is dirty, it has to be changed. Uh, but the baby doesn't have to be thrown out with it. You don't have to end a relationship because someone's made a suggestion or sent you an email and not shared it with anyone else, kept it private. My goodness. Are we that sensitive that we can't take constructive criticism? I mean, if somebody puts a comment on my channel and I don't like it, I look at it, I read it, I consider what they're saying unless they're just being, you know, totally um, critical for no reason. Um, recently, I had a gentleman that kept saying that he can't hear me. Well, evidently he can't hear me, but I talked to half a dozen other people and they hear me loud and clear. I had one other person that said they had to turn up their volume because I'm so soft spoken. But a dozen other people say, oh yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> so people can hear me. But this gentleman keeps putting on my Bible readings that he can't hear me. Um, so eventually, you know, I, I responded to him very politely and then I went ahead and deleted his comment because it's it's negative people think oh she's soft-spoken nobody can hear her and um, and they come in you know playing the video with that impression or they don't bother watching the video because that comment is there and it's hurtful to the channel because my sound is fine I am a little soft-spoken um, on a lot of my videos, but you can still hear me. Uh, but if you need to go see an audiologist because your hearing is a has a problem, then you need to do that. If there's nobody else saying that about the channel, then evidently it's not true. And I think, you know, I don't know for sure, but I think that he was trying to do that. He was trying to tank my channel, but. Uh, because he kept doing that over and over and I kept telling him no and there were other people responding uh, you know that's a weird kind of troll uh, but uh, I see that there are people that do things that are very subtle and um, and it's just it, it's annoying but I still don't um, go after them so to speak I still don't you know, I just kind of, you know, I say my piece and my response and I wait a little while and then I delete the comment and then I move on. And if behavior continues, I have to like, you know, not allow him to comment because it is harmful, uh, even though it's a subtle thing. So you have to protect yourself in so many ways. There's so many people around you that have motives and it's just a world like that and there are tons of people because of the internet that go around doing stuff like that to people um you know the little it's not the complete backstab but it's just like oh, i'm gonna cut you here kind of thing and um the world can be a beautiful place if you're surrounded by beautiful people but when you open yourself up to YouTube, sometimes there are people come out of the woodwork, if you know what I mean, and um, come after you, and you've done nothing but be wonderful and kind, and try to make the world a better place, try to make the activities you do and the hobbies you do uh, better for everybody, and uh, then it's, uh, woe is me, <laughs> every good deed goes there's not a good deed that goes unpunished. How does that say? But I'm going to keep on keeping on. I'm going to keep on making videos. I'm going to keep on being in the chats. Um, I will just, uh, you know, I will squelch what I say out of kindness in certain environments. I'll just say that. And while there's a segment on with a particular person that doesn't like me, I'll go listen to music while they're on, you know, and then I'm not going to punish the other people 
that are on the panel with them because they're overreactive and they are, and it, it's ironic, somebody, somebody goes on about not being a drama queen over and over and over and over. That's the person that is the drama queen. Just FYI. So, oh, I don't put up no drama, but they certainly create it. Um, so, you know, it's just like, oh, I have to talk about this for the good of the community, but nobody else can talk about it. That's the person creating the drama, not the other people. So, uh, just a little YouTube hint there. Uh, and the only thing we can do is pray for them. You know, that, that they'll stop being overreactive and they'll stop worrying. They'll start worrying more about their true relationships with people and not just about uh, their ratings or their wallet. And maybe not. <laughs> Those are pretty uh, prized possessions in our society. And at the end of the day, none of that's going to matter. We all will go into the grave. We'll all be judged by God. And um, that's one of the things that keeps me going, moving on and smiling because I'm going to do what I need to do for God, for the good of the community, for the good of the planet. And um, at the end of the day, that's who I am. And... At the end of the day, I don't know who they are. They will have to figure that out. But I hope that they come to God and they want to get along and think about how things can go smoothly with people instead of being so reactive and angry and anything else. Uh, when somebody, I mean, it's really pride. It really is their pride. You know, when somebody can't, if you can't make a suggestion to someone, that means they think that you are beneath them uh, because they're more important than you are. That's where that's coming from. That's egotism. That's narcissism. Uh, when it gets to a certain level, it's narcissism. Somebody's like that all the time. So, uh, you know, what do you do? You read your Bible. You look for answers in here. Like Psalm 120 is an excellent chapter. It's very short. But you know that if you are surrounded by people that have deceitful tongues that twist what you say, they react badly when you're just making suggestions and on and on, that you are not alone. That this is something that is ancient with mankind. So... Read your Bible and pray to God for assistance, help, and guidance. The Holy Spirit will guide you through the muck and the mire. Have a wonderful and blessed day.